war, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against evil powers. It is time for me. Hello there, good evening and welcome to the contest on uh, KBN TV. Thank you very much for choosing to join us uh, this evening. Uh, my name is uh, Pastor Kennedy K. Mamwe and I am standing in for my dear brother who is not uh, with us this evening, Reverend Emmanuel Mambwe. But we'll be picking up from where uh, this was left off last week, or is it actually the, the, the last two, three uh, weeks, where we have been looking at uh, the high speed of uh, divorce cases in Zambia. And today our topic is ending divorce cases and bringing healing to marriages. Is it possible that marriages can heal? Is it possible that people can overcome the temptation to walk away from the institution of marriage as God ordained it? And today I am very privileged to be hosting the man of God who needs no introduction he is Reverend Canon Bob Sihubwa, Robert Sihubwa, or better known by many of you as Father Bob. Father Bob, it's good to see you, and I, I dare say Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Happy New Year to you too. Uh, I'm so glad to be here and that we can also join together. Uh, the concern of this program is a shared concern. Indeed. And I trust that it's a concern for many parents and also for the nation. Right. Because the more marriages are breaking down, we get worried of the type of children we'll raise. And therefore, the discussion becomes relevant. And I'm happy that we can connect and chat today. Wonderful. Uh, let me, first of all, begin by asking how is ministry and how is the Lord, you know, uh, you know blessing you in this wonderful year of the Lord 2024? Yeah. Um, ministry has been good. Uh, the year looks very busy. Uh, as you know that the year of the number four we have said is a year of the open doors. Mm. So doors are opening. Right. Now we are understanding doors are opening at two fronts. There's doors of opportunities to do greater things. Yes. But there are also doors that are opening to review what is hidden behind the doors. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> so it will be a year of twists and turns. So there will be blessing on one side, there will be disaster on, on the, the other. other side. Because whatever is hidden in darkness, the door will open and I, will show forth. I like that. And uh, Father Bob, I, I would like to think that the next session of the contest, we would like mm. you to come and uh, talk to us on the the revelation of the hidden you know, Amen. stuff. Because yeah. uh, really, <laughs> that's what... Uh, the Lord would love us to be uh, to be doing. Uh, mm. But coming back to our topic of discussion, lately there's been a lot of um, you know statistics that have been you know shared in the media mm. um, around the high rate of divorce cases, uh, as high as twenty one thousand in the past one year having divorced, mm. and about thirty six thousand having applied for divorce. Now, mm. you agree with me, Father Bob? It's a huge number. Is there a possibility that uh, there could be healing to marriages that may be, you know, falling apart? And, and as you answer that, maybe you could give a precursor to any of you, and as you seek, seek the mind of God, what could be causing, yeah. you know, all of this? Is this societal change? Is it lifestyle that has changed? What, what's happening? Mm. Yeah, it is a, a sad reality but also something that we cannot ride, run away from or hide from. Uh, what has been happening now with the escalating numbers of divorce may be attributed to a number of things. But before we get there, which we'll talk about as we go along, as, as long as Christ is on the throne, we have faith that there can be healing for marriages. Right. Uh, because God is the beginning and the end of all things. Mm -hmm. So as long as he's on the throne, we have no doubt there is hope. For whatever marriage may look extremely hopeless today, there is hope and God can restore that home. Mm. But then among some of the things that could be coming to cause these divorces, they, the list may not be exhaustive. But I think one of the key things that we need to pay attention Mm. 
Uh, and in that sense, that is a dynamic we grew in. And therefore, some believe that the levels of submission were did different then because a woman was 100% dependent on a man. Mm. Over time, with economic challenges and empowerment of women, it has become necessary for women to go out and work. Mm. So when they are out and working, they are earning income. The man is earning income. Has the submission levels been tempered with? Right. Because now I don't need to depend on you 100%. Yes. I can make it myself. So while on the other side, society is changing, the system of marriage has still remained the same. Yes, so we need to relook again at what is submission. Uh, and many of us, as the men of our generation, were raised up by mothers who were at home. Mm. So we saw our fathers go for work, mm. our mother was at home. Mm. But after we've gotten married, we are marrying wives who are at work. Right. And so we don't have a blueprint within us mm. of how to manage a woman who is going for work mm -hmm. because we grew up seeing a woman in the house. So no one has taught us how to deal with a woman at work versus a woman in the house. Mm. And as a result, we need a reorientation right. to understand that the woman has to be at work. If a woman is going for work, I'm going for work. Mm. And we come back in the same car and pack and enter the house. Should the man go and watch TV and the woman work in the kitchen mm. as it was in the past? Mm -hmm. Or should we all fold our sleeves and begin to work, to work. together? Because we are all coming from work, yes. we are both tired, yes. and we both need to eat. So those are some of the dynamics, I think, that have to be there. Very, uh, very interesting change. and very, very deep, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Reverend. Uh, in the absence of the blueprint that you, you, you are referring to, um, is it then possible that the reorientation um, could also begin to address the uh, aspect of what kind of counseling mm -hmm. uh, is being given to those who are entering the, the, the marriages. But, but unfortunately also is that marriages are not just breaking for those that are, are entering now. Mm -hmm. Marriages are breaking for even those that have been in it, mm -hmm. you know, much longer. Yeah. Uh, so, so how must we begin to arrest all of this and what can the church you know, raw be in making sure that we go back to the original God-given blueprint. Mm -hmm. So let me just throw in a few, one or two, before we come to that point. Yeah, so we're talking about the societal change. On the one side, the counseling for marriage and preparation in many aspects has remained the same. Mm. While the demands have changed. Mm. It's like you are, you are in a school curriculum today, uh, you are still learning about the different parts of a locust. What does a locust do when a locust jumps? Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, your life of technology has changed completely. Yes. So somebody will ask the question, what does a locust have to do with my life today? Mm -hmm. But then we are saying, no, this is how curriculum has ever been. You better learn this thing or you will fail your exam. <laughs> so sometimes even in marriage counseling, it has come to that. Mm. But beyond that, we are also seeing the products of generations that were raised by housemaids. Yes, right. Because at some point, when women began to work and men were working, the housemaids were raising the children. Mm. And when we come from work, we don't have enough time with our children. Yes. It's the maid who is with the child for over eight hours. And they're picking up things. And the maid imparts her values. Mm. Uh, or maybe even just puts the child to watch TV so that I can focus on my work. And there is no interpersonal relationship and development. Mm. Now, this young boy who has been raised up by a maid or a girl mm -hmm. now is in their 20s, 25, 26, and they are getting married. Wow. So, where, what theory or lessons would they learn from themselves? Mm. They have been typically raised by a housemaid. Mm. So, it, they become a product now wow. of a child who was left by a house help. That's deep. And now, marriage has become plus plus job on training. Mm. And so, it's a matter of trial and error. But coming to how we may be able to help ourselves, one of the key things that I know has helped a little bit, not totally, uh, at St. Peter's Parish, firstly, we have designed that our counseling for new couples should be six months. After six months, they get married. Mm. When they have been in marriage for six months, mm. we encourage them to come back to counseling. Right. So now we are examining the that's before and post, after post marital post marital counseling. That's a new that's a new one. Yeah. 
So we are now trying to ask the question before mm -hmm. and after. What have you discovered? Uh -huh. What has changed? What yes. has shocked you? Yes. What has excited you? Mm. So we ask the couples to be as open as possible. Wow. And after we do a number of sessions, we let them be. Wow. Another six months, a year later, mm -hmm. they have to come back for marriage counseling. Wow. And that year later is now to prepare them for children. Yes. Because we have said as long as their age is not advanced that they are in a hurry to have children, we encourage couples not to conceive for the first one year. Is this a tailor-made uh, you know, training within St. Peter's? or This is something that you've de developed over time? Because it yeah. sounds very unique. We've been developing, I think, responding to the needs we have seen in society. Right. And others are beginning to pick up on that. Right. So we'll tell a couple, for the first one year, be the two of you. Mm. Don't rush to conceive. Mm. If you happen to conceive in that year, it's not a sin. Yes. But it's just not good advice. Right. So that one year, get to understand each other. Mm. Settle. Connect with each other. And feel the sense that now you are ready to bring a, a, another person into the world. When you do that, we, what we are hoping is that you have spent enough time to understand if you are a husband, to understand your wife, so that when your wife becomes a pregnant woman, you will understand the difference. Right. Because uh, your wife and a pregnant woman are two different people. They are not yes. the same. Yes. And your husband and a pregnant husband, mm -hmm. a man, mm -hmm. are different. Because when a wife gets pregnant, the husband is pregnant. Too. Yes. And sometimes we have thought women are the ones who change. Men change in the time of pregnancy. Absolutely. Seriously. Absolutely. So now because of that benefit of one year, you have understood who my colleague is. When the hormones interfere, you can separate and know this is just hormonal interference. Mm. It will pass and yes. my wife will come here. Wow. When you conceive too quickly, you tend to misinterpret your partner based on the influence of the pregnancy and misunderstand them. Mm. And what we have noticed too is that for couples that tend to divorce later in yeah, years, yeah. and exactly, get an example, a couple who is going to have three children, like in the past three or four, they get married and they conceive immediately after they get married. They have never had time together, the two to of them. To know each other, yes. So the whole of their life, they are focusing on the children who are being born. Mm. Now, an example, if you have got three children, the first child, after they are finished in university and all, mm. they will leave your house roughly around 24, 25 years mm. old. Mm. Mm. You have been married for 25. Yes. The next one, if you space them maybe three years apart or two, they will leave your house when they are 27 or 28 years old. The last born will leave your house uh, when you have been married for 29 to 30 years old. Right. Because you have the spacing in between. Yes. So by the time the last one leaves your house, you have been together for 30 years. So now these children who were a mountain between the two of you. They are no longer there. You are focusing on the children. You don't see each other. Yes. Now the children have been left. Suddenly you are now the two of you. Sure. And now you never knew the individual before. Now you have to live with this individual you are beginning to discover now. The shock. The shock. So you now begin to wonder... I didn't know you would eat like this. <laughs> I didn't know you were the one who was leaving all these stinky tokens. I thought it was the children and the ABC. And the result, result, we see people who have been married for 20 years, 30 years, beginning to divorce now. Now. Mm. And someone wonders, but all these years you have survived. Yes, why are you divorced? Why now? They're it's because children. all these years, you are preoccupied on the children. Wow. Now the children have left. You've got to learn to be together, the two of you. Now, dear viewers, you're watching uh, the contest on uh, KPN TV, and we're discussing ending divorce cases, bringing healing to marriages. My guest is uh, Father Robert uh, Sihubwa, um, a very respected voice um, of God in our nation. And I believe that uh, some of you watching us, you will receive healing, whether your marriage is almost, you know, you know at the place where you want to walk away, God tonight can restore that marriage at some point we'll open the phone line and we would like to interact with you because you know father bob uh, reverend you know canon is bringing out some very very profound issues now um father there's something that you talked about societal changes if i may take you back there mm. um that in the sense of submission mm. our traditional uh, disposition was that a woman is for the kitchen and now came all of these things like uh, uh, human rights mm -hmm. 
we are equal okay and indeed in the eyes of god we we were made equal mm -hmm. but there's also one principle in the word of god that the man was created uh, you know first mm -hmm. and it is premised on that that everyone thinks and believes and well it is in black and white in the word of god a, ma a woman must submit a, a husband must love mm -hmm. okay but in the aspect of loving and submission something has gone wrong mm -hmm. here because a woman says what you can do i can do so the aspect of submission is no longer in the picture but is it that perhaps men are not loving their wives as well as the bible says love your wife as christ love the church yeah um it's a very interesting question um the man if you look at the bible sense is answerable for everything so when a home falls apart it doesn't matter where the problem came from mm. the man must answer yes in the first family in the garden of eden uh god gave instruction to adam and eve came later on and adam was happy with eve but in her strolling and uh, doing window shopping as every woman would want to do and we we're going around the, the, the garden she met with a snake and the snake brought out messages of deception mm. and the woman ate the fruit mm. and the shared with the husband he also ate and they failed mm. the interesting thing you see that the, when god came back into that garden in the cool of the day he did not address the woman he addressed the man and according to god the man should have owned up and said I, we shouldn't have done this and abcd right but the man began to pass on the baton to the next person it is not me it is a woman that you gave me and all that so one of the the key solutions i believe to finding a solution is that men must find their place and men must proudly stand in that place and take responsibility mm -hmm. yeah because every house the shape of every house is a reflection of the man in that house right if the house is messed up the man in that house is messed up the woman was created as a helper she comes to supplement and complement mm. and help what the man's pace is mm. but when you find a man who has no pace no direction no nothing a woman is forced to take the lead and when the woman has taken the lead in the home they can only lead up to a particular extent because they're not wired to do it sooner than later they'll get exhausted mm. Mm. the man must take up his mantle and run so the failure of men taking up their place leaves women with nothing to submit to really wow and therefore you have two parallel governments begin to work in the house mm. and some people will stay like that they are they're not divorcing but if you look at the technical term of divorce they divorced many years ago they are sleeping they have just beds. decided that we will be two separate governments in one mm -hmm. house this one has just said i'll not challenge you on anything this one said i'll not tell you anything let's just leave as long as we look at peace father I i'm gonna push the envelope uh, please forgive me and yeah. the viewers forgive me i hope this is uh, uh, a show that your children are not around because some things we're going to discuss yeah. a little bit deep um in marriage yes you, you you talked about how that people hide in children and suddenly children are no longer mm. there there's nothing else to to point to there is the aspect of i fell in love with this person they used to look this nice mm -hmm. and then suddenly because of changes uh, having to bear children and having to work hard you know as men we begin to look a little wrinkled and uh, gray hair and mm -hmm. bald head we are no longer as attractive and our women as, an, are no longer as attractive mm -hmm. uh, to what extent are marriages really becoming um you know victims of the fact that people fail to understand that the person i married will no longer look the same way i married them 20 mm -hmm. years down the line the issue of of beauty and the attractiveness one to to the other how can we reconcile those in helping marriages still remaining relevant yeah uh, reverend it, it brings us back to the issue of responsibility because when we are responsible for each other's lives we realize we are going to grow and age together and so the sense of beauty as i age and my wife ages uh, our our 
sense of beauty needs to be constant with each other mm. because we are pushing at the same rate that we are pushing. Right. We will not be able to compete with the younger generation because it is also their own time mm. and they have to meet people who appeal to themselves. So when we stop being responsible for ourselves and for one another, mm. we then abandon our true image and want to put on a false image of what we are not. Right. And the moment we force, force ourselves now to push the beauty that is not originally in us, that is what now begins to bring problems. Mm. Because now an elderly woman who wants to compete with the younger ones, mm. the younger ones are in the natural terrain. Yes. He said, like, you want to compete with fish in the water. Mm. The fish is in its natural terrain in water. You are supposed to be in the, uh, outside the water to breathe. You will die there sooner than later. Mm. Mm. So we need to understand every generation has its own markers and each generation must keep its lane. Right. And stay within that lane that they are. Mm. Because in the past, we used to say, no, the woman is aging faster than the man. But today... Men have moved from the six pack to the one pack. <laughs> so also men are beginning to have one pack. And the woman is wondering now, I married a six pack. What is happening with this one pack that is here? But apart from that, it is also the issue that first Peter talks about in yeah. chapter three, verse seven, eight, that we must dwell with each other with understanding. Mm. So we need to, to learn how the human body transforms and changes right. and appreciate the knowledge mm. that the human body will not always be the same, mm. but you can make the maximum use of it yeah. at every stage of life. of life. And beyond that too, I think is uh, the advent of social media has not helped matters in some of the homes because everyone you see on social media is beautiful. Looks much better than your own. Uh -huh. and, and handsome. Mm. And sometimes you see someone live here today. When you see their picture on social media, you are shocked. This is the same person. <laughs> the skin is very smooth. Yes. Everything is fair about mm. them. Mm. Mm. And so if you fall in love with the social media lady, mm. you come and see them physically. You say then no. you get shocked. Wow. So because of that, it adds pressure now on those who feel like I'm not looking good enough. I must look like the social media people. Yes, yes. And not knowing some of the social media pictures are edited pictures. They, they, are, they are redesigned not to look as real as they are supposed to be. Mm. And now we begin to chase shadows than being able to live with the same people we have we married. This is where I need now to push the envelope that I, I warned our viewers about. Uh, Predominantly, one of the key factors that hold a marriage together, as you said rightly so, that sometimes people uh, in the definition of divorce, they divorced many, many years ago, but mm -hmm. uh, they are coming out of the same, the same house. Mm -hmm. The aspect of intimacy and, and sex between couples, to what degree, I mean, you cancel couples in your mm -hmm. everyday uh, life, uh, to what degree do you think the starving of one another and what are the issues that are impeding you know, the sexual appetite and, and the coming together? Because uh, that is really consummation of a marriage. Mm -hmm. It's all about that. And in mm -hmm. the absence of it, whether the excesses of it, uh, to what extent is, is you know, intimacy and sex contributing to issues of divorce in marriages? Yeah. Um, for, for most of the reports that have been given around divorces, uh, one interesting thing is that uh, issues of sex are usually coming on number three or number four. The key issues now that are rising with serious problems are finances. Finances. Finances and then capacity to provide leadership. Those are becoming very strong at the top, followed by alcoholism. Mm. Alcohol has begun to wreck a lot of homes. Then you will find the sex comes down there. Number four. Yes. For most people, sometimes if it is a woman that is being starved of sex, uh, research shows that most women tend to endure for quite a period of time. It may be challenging for men, but the ladies would endure for some time. At some point, they have to call shots the way they are. But it is these other issues here that are difficult to endure for too long. Mm. The financial issue. Yes. Because if I can endure a financial issue, what will I eat tomorrow? Who will pay rent? <coughs> yes. What about the school fees of the children? This other thing is a physiological need and an emotional need. It is within me. So I can contain it 
and try to survive in any way I can. Yeah. This financial issue doesn't only affect me, mm. it affects the whole house. Right. And therefore, when there is a strain in the children, there is a strain in the wife, mm. strain in the husband. Mm. And that becomes a key issue. Right. And the, the lack of leadership in the home, most ladies would come and tell you, I don't know where we are going. Mm. And it has been shown that for most men, when we fail to provide leadership, we lean towards jealousy mm. and suspicion. Right. When we fail to provide leadership, we begin to bring rules now. I don't want to see with this kind of person. Mm. I don't want to see with this kind. You can't go to that place. You can't go to that place. And then the woman will ask, where should I go? Yeah. Stay here. Eh, stay here. The man doesn't know. <laughs> All right. As the year opens or the year ends, what should I aspire for? Mm. The man doesn't provide any capacity for a woman to aspire for anything. Mm. And that is not something that most women want to endure because we realize that years are going and we're not growing any younger. Mm. And then the third one, as we said, when it comes to alcoholism, somebody says, I have no money in the house, but they are coming drunk every evening. Yes. The two don't add. And they will say, no, my friends are buying for me. But how long do your friends buy for you? Yes. So why should you look happy in your drunken state when we are hungry in the At house home. here? Mm. That is very difficult for a woman to endure. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. But that does not negate the place of sex in the home. Right. Because sex between a couple is like food mm. that they live by, by covenant and by agreement. Mm -hmm. And so it has ways in which it shuts down the capacity for a man or a woman to function in the workplace, in business, in relationships outside the house. Mm. When it has been tempered with. Uh, researchers will tell you that good sex in the evening or whether it is early in the morning mm. will always result in a good attitude right. towards the day and right. towards work. Right. So there is a way that it affects the productivity, not only of that house, but the productivity overall of the nation. You find someone ranting at work, uh -huh. it is issues, unresolved issues at home. And they cannot say it because it's embarrassing. Right. And when they rant, others also get upset, everyone slows down to work. Mm. If that happens on quantum leaps, mm. then you realize the whole economy is affected because somebody's sexuality in the house mm. has been affected. Wow. Amazing. I really hope uh, our dear viewers are following and learning uh, a few things. This is very, very insightful, uh, Father Bob. Uh, let, let's go to the issue that you raised as the number one mm. issue of financial management in, yeah. in our home and the transparency around it. Mm -hmm. I keep hearing many, many couples saying, I don't know how much my wife earns. I don't know mm -hmm. how much my husband uh, earns. They, they, and most w men would say, never ever disclose how much you are making mm -hmm. you know, to, your, to, to your partner. And in a way that brings about a little bit of, of, of conflict. I don't know what would be your word of counsel to couples around financial management, transparency, and budgeting mm. together in that space. Yeah. I mean, the scriptures have said the two shall become one. Yes. But when the two are one, there are also responsibilities for both of them. Adam was put in the garden mm. and he began to work. Then Eve was brought as a helper. Mm. So we have usually taught that the man's pay runs the house. The woman's pay belongs to her, mm -hmm. and she comes to help when there is need. Right. But with the changing dynamics of society today, we are also saying, since the two are one, mm -hmm. we must both declare what we earn. Right. And we must both agree on what is the budget parameters of the house. The man is responsibility is to provide for the house. The wife's duty is to support where the man is unable to meet the needs of the house in totality. In an event that, yes, mm -hmm. when they started off, the man was able to provide, but because of circumstances around, mm -hmm. along the, the way, uh, maybe he's fired from work or retrenched and whatnot, the woman is the only one working. Is that where the woman now must, uh, you know, take responsibility and know that my help is needed here and not to be demonizing a man mm -hmm. who was previously able to provide yeah. but circumstances have forced them that they cannot provide so in that sense that means that the woman now's definition of a helper comes in mm. i'm unable to provide and therefore you come in to help mm. but that also has a context to it that in the time when the man was able to provide the man surely provided 
right in the day when he's not able to provide the woman understands now that my colleague cannot therefore i will help mm. what becomes a problem is that in the days when the man is capable of providing he does not provide right and in the day when he cannot have anything mm. he demands for the woman to provide mm. then the issue now becomes <laughs> when you were able you didn't you didn't scratch my back how do i come and scratch yours, yours now, now yeah mm. but technically when the man has no source of income and the woman has the woman must take the the, the joy and the pleasure mm. of stepping in to help right and, and and when the woman helps in that way the man must also recognize mm. the help that is coming mm. now what you will notice too that is very difficult to handle is that men are wired to provide right women are wired to receive, to receive. So when a woman is providing in the house for a period of time, some men are the ones who rock the boat mm. because they are not wired to stay in a place of receiving Saving. for too long. <laughs> so they start performing now. They start having moods now. And then the woman is wondering, I'm working so hard to feed the house and you're adding moods on top of it and you can't explain where the, your moods are coming from. This is powerful marriage counseling. Yeah. Really, really, Father Bob. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, this is powerful marriage counseling. Before we open up the lines to ask our viewers to interact with, with us and ask uh, questions directly to you as our guest, the, there are two things that I'd like you to speak to. Number one is the issue of reconciling two families. Mm. Yes, the, the, a man shall leave his mother and father and cling to this woman and the two shall become one. But along the way, there's the aspect of, I have got responsibility, mm -hmm. you know, to, to fulfill to the family where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. The woman, also the family where she's coming from, I need to embrace them as mm -hmm. one, uh, so that the man is not only be seen to be, oh, my mother, my mother, and what about the mother of the, and uh, we, we keep hearing that that is another source of conflict between couples. Yeah. Which family comes first and how mm. we make sure that help goes either way from the man's side and the, the woman's side. Yeah. During our marriage counseling, there's a subject we talk about when we talk about finances. We, we talk about how to create a budget because every house must have a budget. From your first fruit, your tithe, mm -hmm. your expenses and everything. Yeah. Now, the one category in the budget uh, that we call obligations. Right. And that category in the budget that we call obligations is what takes care of what were you taking care of when, before I married you. Maybe it is your duty to educate your young sister, your brother, or to look after your mom or your dad now that they are old and stuff like that. Yeah. So that budget line must be live. And the two must agree. Right. We both have obligations to our parents. Yes. And we tell couples every month mm -hmm. there must be something that goes to your parents. Right. Unless you are many of you with your other siblings, mm -hmm. you make an agreement. Yes. Maybe this month it is yours. Next month the other one I'll come back after three months. Right. And things like that. But there must be an agreed obligation what goes to the uh, man's family mm. and what goes to the lady's family. family. That is on the first part there. The other part is that while you are making the budget, there must also be an amount of money that is under the jurisdiction of each person. Mm, 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 mm. So this is what others will call pocket money or my own allowance right. that is under my authority. If a need arises that is smaller and I need to meet that need, I go to what is within under my authority and then I give, meet that need. Mm -hmm. without coming back to make discussion and negotiation here yes yeah but when the help i'm going to give is exceeding a particular amount that we have agreed a threshold mm -hmm. as a couple mm -hmm. we must come back and make discussion interesting yeah very interesting <clears throat> now father bob this program is called the contest mm -hmm. for one simple reason yeah. there is a contest between the good and the evil yeah. the enemy wants to deceive the enemy comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. But I have come, Jesus said, that you might have life and have it um, in abundance. There's contest for marriages to break while God wants marriages to mm -hmm. stand firm. So life in itself is a contest. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, was born in a family. Mm -hmm. 
which tells me then that God has got a plan for a family. Mm. Why, why is it so important in the church setup that families must be strong, united, and uh, you know, devoted to the cause of the gospel? And why is it that the enemy really sometimes is very heavily focused on de dividing the family? I'd like for you to speak mm. you know, to the contest around the sanctity of a family, strong family, uh, and the desire of God to promote a, a united family uh, versus what the enemy would want to, you know, to impute on a family. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, we have always defined a family as a basic unit of society. Mm. So if you want to destroy a society, destroy the basic unit. Because a family is a foundation of a society. The way the society is today is a reflection of the families in that society. Mm -hmm. So the enemy knows where to strike to get the maximum damage. Hit the foundation. Yes. If you can hit the foundation, you've got the whole society wow. destroyed. Wow. And hence you find the attacks now are coming. So if you're going to raise an example, let's talk about uh, as we come to that part, mm. talking about what divorce will do, an example. Yes. When a husband and wife are together, and they then and they have two, one or two children, and then they want to divorce for whatever reasons. Technically, the man goes back to his family. Yes. Even if he physically doesn't go there. Right. But technically, he's gone there. Okay. The woman goes back to her family. The question is, where do the children go? Go. Mm. Because for the children, the family is mommy and daddy together. Yes. So the children, therefore, now remain in the center without a place to call home while the two of you have gone back to your families. So when they remain now on the street as destitute, mm. they have anger, mm. they get frustrated. Tomorrow, a, a, a particular animal or, of some kind rises in that child. Yes. And then they get married tomorrow. What type of marriage would that be? Wow. wow. Then society starts to break from there. So it becomes a society of angry young girls, angry young men. Mm. A society of disgruntled young people. Yes. A society of people, young people who thought they are not cared for, they are not important. So if I'm not important, what is the use of going to school? Let's just destroy everything that we have. Anything that looks adult, adultly is a, is, a, is a wicked thing. Let's mm. destroy it. Yes. And so they go on rampage and destroy society. Wow. So the enemy knows that the family is a foundation and the basic unit of a society. Therefore, he has to destroy that to control the society. So if you're watching us and you're saying, uh, Father Bob, I've got a question. This is the situation in my neighbor or my family uh, or my own situation. I would like you to help me. There's a number on your screen right now. Please send us a, a text or you can call. We would like to hear from you. Uh, tell us your name and the place where you're calling us from. And then quickly identify the issue that you would like uh, uh, Father Bob to help you with and uh, by the grace of God we pray that many people benefit from your question so uh, right now the lines are open you may text or you may you, you may call in what role then must uh, you play as a church as a clergy to bring about restoration to all of these issues that to, you, you have talked about if we're gonna bring healing as God wanted the marriage to be um, must people be going to Alangizi or must they be watching uh, Jerry Springer? <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what role must the church be doing to make sure that people are brought back to where they are supposed to focus? I think our role is on different fronts. One of them is for those who are not yet married and the other role is for those who are already married. For those who are not yet married, uh, we are encouraging churches to begin sessions with young people. Like we decided this year to start classes with those who are between 17 to 25 years old. And the classes will be running for one to two years. And the major focus of that class is self-awareness. Mm. Getting to understand who am I? What is my history? What are the influences that make me who I am? Mm. What are the battles I am bound to face in my life based on where I am coming from? Uh, and Father Bob, you may hold um, yeah. uh, your thoughts. Uh, good evening and welcome to uh, the contest. Please, your name and where you're calling us from. Hello. Okay, we seem to have lost uh, uh, that call. I'm sorry that... Uh, 
Okay, the caller is back. Good evening and welcome to the contest. Your name and where you're calling us from. It was, uh, please don't beep if you don't have uh, talk time. <laughs> <laughs> Do us a favor and let people who have talk time call and you can listen in and just learn. Thank you. Yeah. So self awareness is critical. Yeah. Because when you are getting married, mm. You are going to give of yourself to another person. Yeah. The question is, do you know what you are giving that person? Mm -hmm. And apart from giving out, you are also going to get another person into your life. Right. To what extent do you know the person you are getting into your life? Mm. So you cannot say, I only love Jane. I only love Gary. Mm. I don't love her family. Mm -hmm. When you get married, you get the whole package. Right. So you better understand what product is this one you are about to marry mm, mm, mm. whose product are they are they what luggage do they carry wow. what luggage do they come with yes and then you examine do i have the capacity to manage this luggage amazing do i have the ability to connect with this one yes good evening and welcome to the contest uh, please your name and where you're calling us from If you can, please reduce the volume on your phone, on, a, on your set rather. Okay. Um, you, you were talking about people having self-awareness. Yes. And whether or not they have the capacity. Is, is it just a matter, for most people, is it a matter of fashion and competition? Oh, we were, we were born in the same year, we completed the same school. Mm. Uh, we are working, she's married and I'm not. Mm. Uh, it, does anything, you know, have to play around, you know, that kind of neighborhood as far as awareness is concerned that it's not a matter of competition? Mm. So for some, it's just pressure of life. Mm. I'm mm. Mm. Yeah. Here is uh, someone, um, uh, Father Bob, saying, please help out. My 10 years marriage is breaking up. The reason, number one, um, Please hold on for me. Let me finish reading this. The reason, number one, elder sister's interference. Number two, my wife feels she's providing more than I do. And then number three, no intimacy. I need your help. Michael from Kitwe. Mm. So three things, yeah. interference from the family of the, the wife. And number three, the wife is the one providing and it has gone back to a place of no intimacy. Uh -huh. Thank you so much, uh, Kitwe and Michael in particular. Uh, for, for, for that, uh, you know, submission. Uh, what do you say, Father Bob, and perhaps he's not the only one, there are mm. many people who could be in yeah. that uh, situation. And before you answer to that, here is another caller. Good evening and welcome to the contest. Your name, where you're calling us from? Oh, my goodness. All right, please, let's go ahead, uh, Father Bob. I think it's to understand by the families that marriage, we say that a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to the wife. Mm. The same thing on the day of marriage in the church, mm. we ask the families, who gives this woman to be married to this man? Yeah. And usually the father will come up and say, I, I do. do. And they'll get the hand of the, the girl and hand her over. The moment they do that, you have released your daughter from your covering mm. into the covering of their husband. Mm. That daughter is gone. My goodness. So brothers and sisters, Shut that off. terrain is no longer your oh, terrain. Goodness. That terrain now is the husband's terrain. terrain. If you want to enter it, you must get permission. Mm. You can't enter anyhow. Mm. And for you who is married as well, you must know the moment that act has been done, mm. you have left your family. Wow. You must focus on building a new house now. Mm. Mm. So your family where you come from is no longer priority one. Yes. Your house is priority one. Mm. So if, for example, you are a man and you are in the town, mm. one side your wife calls you, my car is broken down, I'm mm. 20 kilometers away, yes. please come and pick me. Wow. The same moment your sister calls on the other side, I'm 20 kilometers away, yes. I'm stranded, come and pick me. Yes. Because you are married, you must pick your wife first. Someone is saying, please answer my call. We'll mm. answer your call as long as you're <laughs> not beeping. Uh, let's pick this one call. Good evening and welcome to the contest. Your name and where you're calling us from. So that's the problem I'm having. Just when I want to pick your call, uh, someone else is beeping. Hello, welcome, and let us know where you're calling. <laughs> Hello, good evening. Welcome to the contest. Your name and where you're calling us from. Yes, my name is Frida. I'm calling from. 
from Lusaka. I'm within uh, Kamwala, Kamwala South. Okay. We are having a challenge. We'd like you to help us to to sort out this issue. We have a problem here in the house. I'm a visitor to Mundola, and my uh, my my sister, my what can I say? My in-law, uh, uh, my in-law, the one who's married to my son. I want to say that this woman would get drunk, and when she's get, when she's got a drunk, she becomes something else, and the husband doesn't eat, drink. So what happened on, my, on Sunday last week was something like the husband got upset and she beat her. When she beat her, she went to the hospital. Of course, she was treated. She was treated and everything went fine. I mean, they were sat down by the people, policemen. They sat them down to say that you shouldn't beat. And the boy just said, okay, fine. I understand, but please speak to her also not to upset me when she's drunk. When she's drunk. So, after some few days, like yesterday, she, uh, she went to Mkobula. I am Mkobula. In Georgia, the police money. I am Mkobula. I am Mkobula. And they held this man up outside the gate. They started beating him. They beat him, they beat him. Who I know what a jealous boy. I some good grandma. They want to kill daddy outside. Can you please come and help daddy? Daddy, not in one I mean. I had to stand up. No queer blue, much to Kabula. It was sad, it was sad. So na chuko kwa mtu wa kuilishe, uli hii situation, ucha kutipuwa chitasha ni, because this is not the first time. Her behavior becomes just, uh, uh, you cannot just understand it, especially when she gets drunk. Thank you. So if we, huku tontonka nya kwa hako, mkwezo, tuli tontonka nya, chuka isi mbebe tumubwe peshe mkuba pia shiva kwe. Kwa hivyo mwone kwa hivi, wala tukuluwa, Thank you. Okay, to our phone. To our phone, quiet. Okay, to our phone, quiet. Thank you. Thank you for the call. Father, Father Bob, it's the issue of Supikisha Club. And, uh, <laughs> at what point must a marriage continue when it is around this phase, as, as we have heard from the caller? Yeah, I think what we, do, we, have, we have not heard is what they have done over these years. Yes. Because that's gone on for some time. But immediate counsel for what we can give now, you need to get the, the people who went to discuss this marriage, the Shivu Kombes, because we also don't know how old the marriage is. Mm. Get the Shivu Kombes involved as soon as you can. And let the Shivu Kombes begin to talk to the lady mm. and talk to the man. Mm. If they go to church, mm. get it to the pastors and let the pastors intervene to counsel. Mm. If it's deliverance, they'll have to. If it's human behavior they have to deal with, they have to deal with that. If these two levels are unable to produce results, that is when you get the families involved. Right. Well, um, a few more questions here. Uh, this one says, please help me. My husband doesn't touch me. Um, let me put this on flight mode. Please help me. My husband doesn't touch me because I'm pregnant. And he says he will touch me after I give birth. Okay. Um, the other one says, um, it's a wonderful topic. I need to learn more. Okay. Thank you very much. No name there. Judith Livingstone. I want, uh, no. Okay. So the husband doesn't touch uh, <laughs> someone because she's uh, pregnant. And I think you talked yeah. about these things. Mm -hmm. And again, um, it matters too mm. whether is that is a first pregnancy yes. or this is a, a recurring pregnancy. Right. Because if it is a first pregnancy, it is possible that the husband may not have been prepared for what pregnancy means, means. and what his duties are. So for some, it may be out of ignorance. Yes. They think they are troubling you if they are going to touch you. So right. they must leave you until you deliver and you come back. Mm. Others may be informed by wrong beliefs mm. that you don't meet with your wife when she's pregnant. Mm. You will interfere with the development of, of the, the child. child. 
So it might be coming from different angles like that, but it would be good to have a talk with that man mm. and understand why does he not touch you. Right. Yeah. I think this is the one who was saying, please pick up my call. Uh, good evening. Welcome to the contest. Hello. Can you reduce your your volume? Please reduce your volume on the for, on the set. Okay. Please go ahead. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, and how old is the man? Avena mwe nuba dine mi akainga. Wadina forty nine years. Forty nine years. Wow. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> 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 I think for the man that is coming late, uh, again, he's living together with understanding. Mm. You will notice we asked the age that the man got married in his 20s. Uh, there's a saying now among most of the men who got married early, when you ask them, they say, I didn't play. Mm. It's like, I didn't see life. Mm. I got involved with responsibility too early. too early. Now that I'm in my 40s, that's when I'm beginning to see life. Right. So I want to go back to go and catch up with the syllabus I ran away from. <laughs> so it is important that that man must take responsibility to understand they are no longer a boy, they are no longer a youth. Yes. They are an adult with children and grandchildren. Mm. So at the age of 49, you already have three grandchildren. Mm. That was a very fast one. Yeah. So because of that, you have no luxury to go out there and begin to play. You close that door already. Because he might be competing with his children. Yeah. Because you'll be going to the same place with your children. Yes. <laughs> yes. In the end, your grandchildren. Yeah. And you get shocked there. So I think the key thing you have to do, Mama, is to make sure that the pastors at your place get involved mm. so they can help this man to grow and become the age he's supposed to be. Mm. If you can do that because you go to church, then we'll see how far it will go. Wonderful. Yeah. Times, you know, can fly. And uh, when you are having a wonderful time, Look, we, we already, <laughs> we've done one hour. <laughs> I, I don't know where time has gone, uh, but I know we've just barely scratched the surface of this. You can mm -hmm. tell by the, uh, but uh, f maybe, Father, you didn't respond to the man about fasting, whether he should be fasting from food alone. <laughs> yeah, according to the scripture, you need to agree with your wife every time you want to go on a fast. Mm -hmm. You must agree, should we, are we going to abstain from sexuality or not? You can have sex when you are fasting. It is not wrong. The only challenge that is the intensity of the fast. If the fast is longer and it's a dry fast, you will have no strength. Mm. And therefore, you must come into mutual agreement that you abstain for a while. Right. So it must be an agreed position. For many of you that have been watching, you've been trying to call us and uh, the numbers are coming, but we don't have much time. 
Uh, I would uh, like to request uh, Father Bob to speak a word to you uh, in your situation uh, across the nation, wherever you may be watching us from, and, uh, pe and pray for you that uh, there is hope for your marriage. Uh, God can bring healing to your marriage because it is the intention of God for the family unit to remain united because Jesus Christ was born out of a family and uh, evangelists are coming out of families, pastors, presidents, everyone is coming out of a family. So you can clearly see that the family unit is very important for the agenda of God in any generation. And that's why the enemy is after your marriage and your family. But here we are with the man of God. He's going to pray for you and we trust that the Lord will heal your marriage and re restore to where he wants it to be. Father yeah. Bob. Yeah, as we speak that word, you must remember the host of this program. I'm told they'll be having a couples session on the 20th of April at Mount Moriah. So if you want to get in touch with this uh, studio, they can give you details for that. And then we can have a one-on-one -on -one discussions and discussions in a group. So the word that we conclude with is to understand that the moment you get married, your life does not belong to you. It belongs to your partner. And the two of you together are accountable to God to raise the next generation. You can either raise a broken generation or you can raise a responsible generation. But according to scripture, one day when we all stand before the face of God, we will give an account of what we did on earth. So come rain, come sunshine, you must do everything possible to make your household stand strong. You enter that marriage with an intention until death do us part. Let's stay until death do us part. So let us all mature. None of us must be childish to make the life of another ungovernable. Let us mature where there are difficulties. Approach your pastor. Talk about it. If you have no pastor, you don't go to church. Approach the shibukombes who discuss your marriage. All right? If they can't sort it out, look for anybody. You may not be a member of their church, and they will come as a pastor, as a reverend, to help you. Our aim is that no marriage must ever break so that the families may stand and we may raise children who will give us a better future. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, so thank you very much for, for, for watching the contest. Uh, Father Bob, I, I don't know um, if time allowing on his schedule and calendar, we would love for him to come back. Uh, I believe many of you, as I can read even now, messages saying, Father Bob, that's a wonderful topic. Mm -hmm. I wish to hear more. Uh, he, he has only talked about you know, marriage counseling at Mount Moriah, but uh, I would like you, Father Bob, before we go, to talk about some of the marriage counseling sessions that you are doing at you know, St. Yeah. Peter's, um, especially this, the post-marriage one yeah. and how people can get involved. Yeah, and then um, if you need to get in touch with us, my number is 978 76 um, And you can also get hold of this broadcast by their contact and they will be able to give you our contacts and you can reach us at any time. When you call and are unable to reach us, please do leave a text message. You can also reach my wife, Gary, on 0978-542404. 0978-542404. And leave a message there if you can. We cannot pick a call and we'll reach out back to you. We are located along Bama Road at St. Peter's Parish. Uh, just next to the new feeding station at the junction of traffic lights from UTH and Bama Road. That is where the church is. At any time, we'll be able to attend to you and help where we can uh, when, as a need arises. Thank you very much. Uh, Reverend Emmanuel Mambwe will be back next week with the contest and with uh, another guest. Maybe, just pray, maybe it will be Father Paul. Until next time, thank you for watching. God bless you and keep you. Remember to go to church tomorrow. Bye-bye for now. Amen. It is time to bring back the glory to the body of Christ. Join the Mamwe brothers as they expose the works of the enemy so that you can manifest the glory of the Lord. The contest, glory back to the body of Christ.